Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's light it on fire and send it to the world. All right. Let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome to the sixth lesson in the Firebase database for SQL developer series. And today we're going to be talking about denormalization. And if you're coming from a SQL background, which you probably are since you know you're watching this, you probably know a lot about normalization, which is, you know, reducing data duplication at all costs in your database. And normalization is great, but today I want you to take that idea, that concept, take it right here and just put it right down here. Don't lose it, though, because it's really important. But I want you to have an open mind when we talk about denormalization, because it's pretty much going to contradict everything that you know about normalization. So to learn more, let's dive right down into the laptop. Denormalization is just simply duplicating data. And to be more specific, it's duplicating data to simplify or reduce querying. This database model is what we've been using for the entire course. It is our events database. And we have users, events, and event attendees. So event attendees is sort of a junction spot for events and users. So we know which users are going to which events. And we can see that through sharing the key of FM for the events for Firebase Meetup, and also the one and nine keys, which are the user IDs underneath users. And obviously, you'd be using a push ID or a Firebase authentication ID, but this is just to keep it simple. And underneath event attendees, we're storing just the name. So if we wanted to get the entire results for the user, we had to do a join, which is what we did in the previous video. And the way this join looked was is that we grabbed a root reference from the database. And then from there, we grabbed a reference to event attendees slash FM, and that's the Firebase meetup. And then attached a child event listener, which fired off for every attendee at the event. When each attendee went and fired off, we went and grabbed a reference to their data underneath users using the key, and then called once and got that data back. And so effectively joining the two together. Now, this is fine if you're not doing this query that often or if it's a small set of data. But once your access pattern grows larger and you're running this query all the time or you're running this on a larger data set, you'd probably like to eliminate this inner read and just read this data one time, just like this, just with a simple child added. But currently, we can't because you can see underneath event attendees, we're just storing the name. But what if, rather than store the name, we stored the entire user object? And this way, we could just do that one read and we'd get back everything we needed about the users just by saying child added on event attendees slash FM. So a big question I always get is, when do I denormalize my data? When, how do I know to duplicate data here or there? And the rule of thumb is you want to structure your data after your view. So I built this app called Bonfires, which is a list of Firebase events. And Bonfires uses the same events database that we're using in this series. And what you can see up here at the top in Bonfires is that there is a navigation bar where we can click Featured, SF, Denver, London, and Berlin, and it will bring us back those specific events at those locations. Now, you would imagine that something you could do is you could just say, I'm going to do a query on the events key, and I'm going to say, order by child location equal to SF or equal to Denver. But rather than do that, I could also denormalize. So I could create a completely new data structure called location events. And then from there, key off each location. So SF for San Francisco and BER for Berlin and then store each event at that location underneath that location key. And then if you just need to read the data, it's just a straight read. There's no querying. You just create a reference to location event slash SF and then attach your real time listener and that's all you need to do. And then if you need to do this for another city, you just change the key. So instead of San Francisco in this case, we choose Berlin and attach our listener. And the great thing about this is, is that if you need to do further querying, nothing's stopping you. You still have the ability to order by any child within the location events key. 
So another big question about denormalization is what about the consistency of my data? So if you're duplicating data all over the place, how can you ensure that when it changes in one spot, it changes everywhere? So take a look at our users database. We have users and we have event attendees. And in users, if the user David goes and changes their name to Dave, you can see that it won't automatically go and propagate to event attendees. And so this could be a bit of a problem because you don't have the consistency that you're looking for. Denormalization is just simply duplicating data to simplify or reduce querying. And once you start duplicating your data throughout your database, it becomes really simple to read your data because you don't have to do a complex join or a query. But the problem is with consistency, is when you start duplicating data everywhere, it becomes hard to make sure it's all consistent. And you can fix that with multi-path updates, which we will be covering in the next lesson. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for watching our video. You might also enjoy this video, or even this video. And you should subscribe because it's a snap. Oh, ow, that was a bad decision.